The Farmer and the Stork A stork of a simple and trusting nature had been asked by a party of cranes to visit a field that had been newly planted. But the party ended dismally with all the birds entangled in the meshes of the farmer's net. The stork begged the farmer to spare him. Please let me go, he pleaded. I belong to the stork family, who you know are honest and birds of good character. Besides, I did not know the cranes were going to steal. You may be a very good bird, answered the farmer, but I caught you with the thieving cranes. And you will have to share the same punishment with them. The moral of the story is, you are judged by the company you keep. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Crow and the Pitcher in a spell of dry weather, when the birds could find very little to drink, a thirsty crow found a pitcher with a little water in it. But the pitcher was high and had a narrow neck, and no matter how he tried, the crow could not reach the water. The poor thing felt as if he must die of thirst. Then an idea came to him. Picking up some small pebbles, he dropped them into the pitcher one by one. With each pebble, the water rose a little higher until at last it was near enough so he could drink. The moral of the story is, in a pinch, a good use of our wits may help us out. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Ant and the Dove A dove saw an ant fall into a brook. The ant struggled in vain to reach the bank, and in pity, the dove dropped a blade of straw close beside it. Clinging to the straw like a shipwrecked sailor to a broken spar, the ant floated safely to shore. Soon after, the ant saw a man getting ready to kill the dove with a stone. But just as he cast the stone, the ant stung him in the heel, so that the pain made him miss his aim, and the startled dove flew to safety in a distant wood. The moral of the story is, a kindness is never wasted.
Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Lion and the Mouse A lion lay asleep in the forest, his great head resting on his paws. A timid little mouse came upon him unexpectedly, and in her fright and haste to get away, ran across the lion's nose. Roused from his nap, the lion laid his huge paw angrily on the tiny creature to kill her. Spare me, begged the poor mouse. Please let me go, and someday I will surely repay you. The lion was much amused to think that a mouse could ever help him, but he was generous and finally let the mouse go. Some days later, while stalking his prey in the forest, the lion was caught in a hunter's net. Unable to free himself, he filled the forest with his angry roaring. The mouse knew the voice and quickly found the lion struggling in the net. Running to one of the great ropes that bound him, she gnawed it until it parted, and soon the lion was free. You laughed when I said I would repay you, said the mouse. Now you see that even a mouse can help a lion. The moral of the story is, a kindness is never wasted. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Boys and the Frogs some boys were playing one day at the edge of a pond in which lived a family of frogs. The boys amused themselves by throwing stones into the pond so as to make them skip on top of the water. The stones were flying thick and fast and the boys were enjoying themselves very much. However, the poor frogs in the pond were trembling with fear. At last, one of the frogs, the oldest and bravest, put his head out of the water and said, Oh, please, dear children, stop your cruel play. Though it may be fun for you, it means death to us. The moral of the story is, always stop to think whether your fun may not be the cause of another's unhappiness. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Ants and the Grasshopper One bright day in late autumn, a family of ants were bustling about in the warm sunshine. Drying out the grain they had stored up during the summer. When a starving grasshopper, his fiddle under his arm, 
came up and humbly begged for a bite to eat. What? cried the ant in surprise. Haven't you stored anything away for the winter? What in the world were you doing all last summer? I didn't have time to store up any food, whined the grasshopper. I was so busy making music that before I knew it, the summer was gone. The ants shrugged their shoulders in disgust. Making music, were you? They cried. Very well, now dance. And they turned their backs on the grasshopper and went on with their work. The moral of the story is, there's a time for work and a time for play. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Hare and the Tortoise A hare was making fun of the tortoise one day for being so slow. Do you ever get anywhere? he asked with a mocking laugh. Yes, replied the tortoise, and I get there sooner than you think. I'll run you a race and prove it. The hare was much amused at the idea of running a race with the tortoise, but for the fun of the thing, he agreed. So the fox, who had consented to act as judge, marked the distance and started the runners off. The hare was soon far out of sight, and to make the tortoise feel very deeply how ridiculous it was for him to try a race with a hare, he lay down beside the course to take a nap until the tortoise should catch up. The tortoise, meanwhile, kept going slowly but steadily, and after a time, passed the place where the hare was sleeping. But the hare slept on very peacefully, and when at last he did wake up, the tortoise was near the goal. The hare now ran his swiftest, but he could not overtake the tortoise in time. The moral of the story is, the race does not always go to the swiftest. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Frogs and the Ox an ox came down to a pool to drink. As he splashed heavily into the water, he crushed a young frog into the mud. The old frog soon missed the little one and asked his brothers and sisters what had become of him. A 
a great big monster, said one of them, stepped on little brother with one of its huge feet. Big was he, said the old frog, puffing herself up. Was he as big as this? Oh, much bigger, they cried. The frog puffed up still more. He could not have been bigger than this, she said. But the little frogs all declared that the monster was much, much bigger. And the old frog kept puffing herself out more and more until all at once she burst. The moral of the story is, do not attempt the impossible. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. Belling the Cat The mice once called a meeting to decide on a plan to free themselves of their enemy. The Cat At least they wished to find some way of knowing when she was coming, so they might have time to run away. Indeed, something had to be done, for they lived in such constant fear of her claws that they hardly dared stir from their dens by night or day. Many plans were discussed, but none of them was thought good enough. At last, a very young mouse got up and said, I have a plan that seems very simple, but I know it will be successful. All we have to do is to hang a bell about the cat's neck. When we hear the bell ringing, we will know immediately that our enemy is coming. All the mice were much surprised that they had not thought of such a plan before. But in the midst of the rejoicing, over their good fortune, an old mouse arose and said, I will say that the plan of the young mouse is very good. But let me ask one question. Who will bell the cat? The moral of the story is, it is one thing to say that a thing should be done, but quite a different matter to do it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Town Mouse and the Country Mouse A town mouse once visited a relative who lived in the country. For lunch, the Country Mouse served wheat stalks, roots, and acorns with a dash of cold water for drink. The Town Mouse ate sparingly 
nibbling a little of this and a little of that, and by her manner, making it plain that she ate the simple food only to be polite. After the meal, the friends had a long talk, or rather, the town mouse talked about her life in the city while the country mouse listened. They then went to bed in a cozy nest in the hedgerow and slept in quiet and comfort until morning. In her sleep, the country mouse dreamed she was a town mouse with all the luxuries and delights of city life that her friend had described to her. So the next day, when the town mouse asked the country mouse to go home with her to the city, she gladly said yes. When they reached the mansion in which the town mouse lived, they found on the table in the dining room the leavings of a very fine banquet. There were sweetmeats and jellies, pastries, cheeses, the most tempting foods that a mouse can imagine. But just as the country mouse was about to nibble a dainty piece of pastry, she heard a cat mew loudly and scratch at the door. In great fear, the mice scurried to a hiding place, where they lay quite still for a long time, hardly daring to breathe. When at last they ventured back to the feast, the door opened suddenly, and in came the servants to clear the table, followed by the house dog. The country mouse stopped in the town mouse's den, only long enough to pick up her carpet bag and umbrella. You may have luxuries and dainties that I have not, she said as she hurried away. But I prefer my plain food and simple life in the country. With the peace and security that go with it. The moral of the story is, poverty with security is better than plenty in the midst of fear and uncertainty. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Fox and the Grapes a fox one day spied a beautiful bunch of ripe grapes hanging from a vine trained along the branches of a tree. The grapes seemed ready to burst with juice, and the fox's mouth watered as he gazed longingly at them. The bunch hung from a high branch, and the fox had to jump for it. The first time he jumped, he missed it by a long way. So he walked off a short distance and took a running leap at it, only to fall short once more. Again and again he tried, but in vain. Now he sat down and looked at the grapes in disgust.
what a fool I am, he said. Here I am, wearing myself out to get a bunch of sour grapes that are not worth gaping for. And off he walked, very, very scornfully. The moral of the story is, there are many who pretend to despise and belittle that which is beyond their reach. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go.